Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray back at it again. And today we are talking to Driver XL. In the comment section, he asked if I could show him a thing or two about hi-hat programming. And that's what we're going to do. So that being said, we want to go ahead and look at Logic. There are three things that you can do to really up your game when it comes to hi-hat programming. Now, the very first thing that you're going to want to do if your MIDI region loop ultra beat drum machine designer is all contained within one track, you're going to want to go to edit. You're going to want to separate the MIDI events by note pitch. And this gives us the unique ability to be able to separate the kick from the snare from the hi-hat. In this case, track number four is in fact the hi-hat. And so I'll label it as such. Now, one of the drawbacks of this, if you want to look at it that way, is that this is essentially just one channel, but being separated by note. The benefit, of course, is that when I click on this individual unique MIDI region, that I can double click and access the parts. Otherwise, I would have to, if I go back here, Command Z, look at all the information, including the kick, including the snare. So I think the very first thing, especially when you're a beginner, is to separate by MIDI note. Okay, so after that, you're going to really want to learn how to utilize the grid division. Okay, so for all my hackers out there that really understand how to edit the program, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this MIDI region. All right, then I'll double click it. And so this brings us into the piano roll as expected. And, and we're looking at this super basic pattern. Take a listen. Okay, so how was this created? Well, there's a billion ways to do this. At the most basic level, you can instantiate a note, you know, anywhere on the piano roll. In that case, I landed right on the hi-hat. And if you want to, you can use your snap to grid setting in order to make your edits, okay? And when you do that, everything kind of adjusts to the grid. And so we could do the most basic thing, you know, just copy over like this. Perhaps you can create a selection and hit Command R, okay? And, and you can have this kind of workflow, which does take a little bit of time, but it's, it's still an option. Another thing that you can do, which probably would be a little faster for some, not for everyone, is uh, go inside of the toolbar. That's Control Option Command T. You can also hit that icon at the top of the screen here. And then what you do once you're there is you click on Note Repeat right there. Now this is a unique little menu in that allows you to be able to record patterns completely quantized on the grid with any rate that you choose. So in this case, I'm going to choose 16th notes. Now, of course, I have to find the note. Okay, so then now I'll be playing the hi-hat at a rate of 16th notes. So I don't want that. I just want eighth notes. Yeah, that works quite well. All right, so then I'll go ahead and hit the record button up here. You can hit the corresponding key command R as well. Okay, good. So then now when we listen back. So that's basic enough, right? We got everything to land right on the grid. You could also play this and I'm just giving you more options here. All right. So then once we've utilized no repeat, let's say you want to start adding a little bit more juice, right? Some more interest. We can access the brush tool and this multifaceted tool is very cool insofar as we can use it in conjunction with the time quantization value. So then what I'll do is I'll start adding uh, some 30 second notes on top of this stuff. So I'm going to erase this first MIDI event by hovering over with the brush tool that will allow me to access the eraser. And then now I'll draw in. Now, some of, some of you might say, hey, well, that's fine. But what if I actually want to look at the grid, I really want to make my own decisions 
Uh, I don't want to guess. Well, again, you can go ahead and change the grid value right up here. So then I'll change it so it corresponds to my quantization value. And so then now I can draw my 30 second notes. Let's take a listen to this. Good, and I'll add some triplets here. So I'll go to 16th notes inside the quantization value. Inside of snap, I make sure that my value is set to division. And then I will change the division value on the grid to something that equates to triplets, which in this case we could do 12 or 24. Let's see what 24 sounds like and go from there. Control click, create a note. And uh, because I'm under division, it's going to fall in line with the laws of snap to grid. That's one way to do it, right? I could have also just used the pencil tool and just draw them in, right? However you want to do it, it's all the same. Um, I'll go ahead and play this back. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And then now let's uh, edit this one. So remember, my snap to grid is in division inside of the piano roll, right? And I'll just create two notes here. Let's see what that sounds like. Actually, I'll do it like this. And I'll nudge this one over. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So again, separate by MIDI note if that is applicable, if you're using drummer or if you're using DMD. Then after that, you want to utilize the grid division on top of your snap to grid and nudge. Lastly, utilize the tools that are available within Logic Pro, mainly the brush tool, note repeat, which is inside of the toolbar right up here. And then of course, you're going to want to use your ninja editing skills to get the job done. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe. You can change your mind later if you want. Uh, I really want to thank all of the people out there that are commenting, that are showing me love and support. Keep showing me the good vibes and I will keep bringing it back. Uh, have a great day. We'll catch you soon. Cheers. <music>